Hi guys, welcome to the gun shop with me, John, and today we're having a look at this. This is the Maruku MK60 or Mark 60 High Pheasant Edition. 32 inch fixed choke, grade 5 wood, grade 5 engraving. Have a look. So here we have it, the Mark 60 High Pheasant. She's absolutely stunning, isn't she? Fitted with the BC Maruku hard hand fitted heel plate. It's always worth mentioning that these Marukus are completely hand finished, so there is uh, something a little bit more special about them than, than certain other models or brands, let's say. Uh, plastic heel plate, maybe it would have been nice to see something soft there, but you can't have everything, unfortunately. And I think it's a little bit more on target, let's say, to have this, more game shooters are going to prefer the hard pad, helps for a more consistent mount. The wood, a uh, grade 5 American Black Walnut. You know, if a gun's going to crack, it's going to be a Maruka, and we all kind of know that. But, you know, we still don't care, because it's beautiful, and beauty is really quite nice. Uh, oval, big silver oval, uh, or probably non-precious silver-coloured metal. And there's the other side of the stock. I say they are absolutely beautiful, but a little bit brittle. So you have to be a little bit more careful with them. That said, care generally doesn't have anything to do with it. If it's going to go, it's going to go. So moving on, we have a semi pistol, pistol grip with no palm swell. Uh, complete hand checkering here with the triple points. That's actually, I think, a real lovely thing. And a drop points back there as well. Teardrops, if that's what you want to call them, but they're called drop points. Um, standard Maruku Browning heading up all around there. So nothing too exotic or special. Engraved top lever. Uh, you have auto safety there. Auto safety is nice, we like auto safety. Auto safety works for me. Uh, they used to have light like, supply the part to have it fitted, but now they put it in a standard because they realised people weren't fitting it. And actually, perhaps it was a nice thing that it was fitted so that people were safe. Uh, non adjustable trigger. It would maybe be nice to see the adjustable trigger just so that you're not perhaps getting around that trigger so much. But, you know, again, that's it does kind of look nice with the gun. And a silver trigger as well. It's just, they could have put gold in, but that would have ruined it. Uh, we have the engraved top lever there. That's lovely as well. Fully engraved sides. And it's got this deep scroll work, which is lovely and hand finished. Something you've probably noticed is that it says lead shot only. This is because you cannot put steel through super tight chokes. However, you can still use bismuth and tungsten matrix and that sort of thing. So we have the standard forend in a Schnabel thing, which is quite nice, just nice and light and well holdable. Solid mid ribs, vented top rib with a double bead sight, and then the signature full and three quarter mega death choked in the front there. So having established that it is a absolutely beautiful looking gun with some lovely practical features, let's talk more about it. Okay. So, uh, the stock dimensions lead for a slightly more aggressive style of shooting than the standard Mark 60. I think they come up 10mm higher at the back and about 3mm higher at the front. So you end up, instead of the Mark 60, which is a very open shooting gun, meaning you can shoot it sort of quite traditionally, you have to get quite aggressive with the Mark 60 high pheasant. Uh, it's led, it's all leads from the popularity of the Mark 38, and the Mark 38 being converted to being used as a high pheasant gun or as a sporting gun. This is why they've released this. Here's all the good stuff from a Mark 60. The slightly smaller rib, the slightly lower stock, the slightly less aggressive forend, the Schnabel forend as opposed to the beaver tail. With all the good stuff from the Mark 38, the 32 inch barrels, the fixed full and three quarter chokes, the slightly higher stock, 
that little bit of extra weight. And actually, I tell you what, they've produced near as damn it one of the most perfect guns in the market, in my opinion, for not killer money. You know, for all intents and purposes, this gun is half the price of what it's competing with. And that's good for me. That is good for me. In terms of handling, it is a little bit more front heavy than the standard Mark 60, that's because of those 32 inch barrels. They do certainly give you a little bit of something out the front, but it's not horribly front heavy, you know. You're probably only half an inch in front of the hinge pin, if actually about a quarter of an inch in front of the hinge pin, which isn't too bad. It actually leads for a slowish gun, but still very calculated. You know, it's not all left hand, you've still got some right hand maneuverability there. At the trigger being fixed, it's nice, that's the only real thing I'd want to change about this gun is I wouldn't mind it having an adjustable trigger. Given for what it's for, I understand that it's supposed to keep the classy looks and that's why it's got the Mark 60 trigger, but it would have been nice to have the Mark 38 trigger so you could just push it forward a little bit. Certainly for people with bigger hands and maybe for certainly high birds, I think a lot of people like to be a bit more stretched just to control that swing a little bit more. Uh, the mid bead, beautiful. We like mid beads, it's a very Maruku thing to put on and that works for me. Generally speaking, I couldn't imagine a better gun. Well, I could, but I couldn't imagine a better gun for just over three grand. So, that was it. I like it. I hope you like it too. I'll see you next time.